My name is Ray McCullough. Uh, the recognition ceremony is conducted annually to honor civilians and police officers who have acted in an outstanding and or heroic manner. I'd like you now, uh, ask you now to please rise while the Clarkstown Police Honor Guard presents the colors. Colors, mark time. Acting Chief Captain Robert Mann will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to be followed by Department Chaplain Reverend David Lothrop who will deliver the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Detail, order, heart, colors, shoulder, arm. Pray. Let us take a moment to remember all the men and women in law enforcement and those in our military who have paid the ultimate price and sacrifice. Oh God, how thankful we are to be blessed with men and women who dedicate their lives in order that we may continue to share the freedoms that we so richly enjoy. We are truly thankful for their accomplishments. Today, with gratitude in our hearts, we come to recognize those individuals in law enforcement and civilian who have gone beyond the call of duty. Through their achievements, they have brought historic acts. They have made historic acts. Those acts are something that we truly, truly appreciate. They have brought great credit upon themselves, this department, this community, and especially to their families. May the honors that we bestow upon these honorees challenge each and every one of us to serve our community with renewed commitment. We're also grateful today for our K-9 unit and their handlers. Last year, K-9 King was retired. Just recently, he passed away. We are truly grateful for how he helped keep this community safe. This morning, we're also pleased to recognize the achievements of our young men and women it is a great privilege to honor them with scholarships. May they continue to become enlightened and prepared to lead us in the future. We now take a moment to remember all members of this department who have been called to their higher calling. It's our prayer now that they will continually rest in peace. And now, O oh God, may thy blessing be upon us all as this ceremony continues, for we ask it in thy name. Amen. Please remain standing while the colors are retired.
Detail. Order. Hark. Please be seated. I'd like to thank uh, Detective Robert McDonald and the entire Honor Guard. They always do such an outstanding job. Thanks, thanks, guys. I'll now introduce the dais. Uh, from left to right are Captain Anthony of Chinnikov, Acting Chief Police Captain Robert Mann, Department Chaplain uh, Reverend David Lothrop, Clarkstown PBA President Raymond Lachette, and the Town Board uh, Supervisor George Holman, Councilman Frank Borelli, Councilwoman Stephanie Hausner, Councilman John J. Noto, and Councilman Daniel Cabrera. Thank you all for being here today. I would also like to recognize some other elected officials and distinguished guests in our audience who've been kind enough to attend and take part in recognizing today's honorees. Uh, retired Chief William Collins, Judge David Asher, County Legislator Christopher Carey, Judge Scott Ugell, County Legislator Lori Santulli, Town Clerk Justin Sweet, County Legislator Lon Hofstein, Judge Howard Gerber, and retired Chief Peter Noonan. I'd now like to invite uh, Acting Chief Mann back to the podium to say a few words. Good morning. <clears throat> First, I want to thank all the uh, people in the audience for attending this award ceremony. I'd also like to congratulate all the police officers and civilians that are receiving awards today and congratulate all the scholarship winners and wish them well as they head off to college in the fall. <clears throat> this year, Police Week started with uh, Police Chief Arnold Amthor of the Maybrook Police Department in Orange County being shot at a domestic disturbance. It continued last night with our own officer, Tim Woolley, being involved in a pretty serious car accident while responding to a fight call. He remains in Nyack Hospital this morning recovering. We pray for a speedy and complete recovery for both of these officers. Police week will end after the memorial service on the, court, on the county courthouse lawn later this morning where police officers will be providing security from the rooftops because of the unpredictable and volatile world in which we live. The world in which we live has changed dramatically since I started my law enforcement career over 30 years ago, and I'd like to share just a couple of examples of how that has changed over the years. The weapons we use have changed. When I started, they gave me a six-shooter and a dozen extra bullets. Today, officer carry nine millimeter and 40 caliber pistols, patrol rifles, and tasers. The way we communicate has certainly changed. Back in the day, we would basically talk and a hardwired phone was considered high-tech. We still talk, but mostly on cell phones. We also text, we tweet, we email, we fax, we blog, we Instagram, we picturegram. The list goes on and on. Investigations have certainly changed. Investigations that once started in a phone book now start on Facebook. And although we still look for fingerprints at a crime scene, we also now look for the digital footprint that was left behind. This digital footprint includes cell phone records, texts, emails, GPS information, license plate reader printouts, internet histories, and digital camera footage that appears sometimes to be everywhere. The illegal drug chain trade has changed. We went from thinking that heroin was an inner city problem to now finding it in our own backyards. And the drugs that people ingest, inhale, inject, snort, stiff, smoke, and the pills that they pop to get high continue to change and continue to change ch to challenge law enforcement. And the way we deal with schools have also changed. 30 years ago, we were chasing kids off of school property. Now we're teaching kids how to safely evacuate from schools and how to be safe in their own classrooms. The faces of the officers sitting in front of me have also changed. But what hasn't changed is the passion that they bring to this job, the enthusiasm that they bring to this job, and the character that they bring to this job. What hasn't changed is their, is their desire to learn, their willingness to become lifelong students of human nature, of discretion, and of compassion. And what hasn't changed is their readiness to continually face dangerous situations and act courageously. 
And what hasn't changed is the confidence I have in these officers that they're up to the enormous challenges that the future brings. Thank you. Supervisor Holman will now deliver some remarks. Good morning and thank you all for being here today. Today really is an important day within our community and this past week was a very important week within our nation. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy declared this past week as Police Memorial Week, which became a time to recall and thank our police officers for their service. Unfortunately, it has also become the week when we recall those who have died in the line of duty or as a result of injuries that they suffered during their service. Would that we would never have to commemorate a week such as this, but as we all well know, the job of a police officer, and as our officers know firsthand, is inherently dangerous. As Captain Mann just, uh, as Captain Mann just recognized, we had a stark reminder of this just last evening when one of our own, Officer Tim Woolley, was injured as a result of a car accident responding to a call. Fortunately, fortunately he, he will be okay, and he'll, he's expected to be discharged from the hospital within the next day. But many others are not so fortunate. 21,183 names are on the National Police Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. 21,183. These are the names of brave law enforcement officers who died in the line of duty in service throughout the history of our nation. It's simply a staggering number in our country, a number that's far too high and one that unfortunately grows each and every year. Today, we pause and recall the fallen, and we thank them for their service that they have rendered, for as the gospel narrative states, there is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. Locally, later today, this morning, we'll gather across the street at 11 o'clock at the courthouse, and we will add three names of law enforcement members to the memorial on our courthouse lawn. These are officers who died as a result of 9-11 related illnesses. Indeed, there are now more officers who have died as a result of illnesses incurred from their service at Ground Zero than those who actually perished during those horrible attacks. We recall all of these brave men and women who died as a result of their service at Ground Zero. The point here is that your job as a Clarkstown police officer is inherently dangerous. Just like in any other town within our country, there are thousands of other towns across our nation where officers put on the badge and face trials and tribulations and face danger. Today at our ceremony, as we gather, we thank all of our officers for their service. We recognize outstanding police work and life-saving actions, and we commend the members of the department for their service. We also realize that nationally much has changed since we gathered here a year ago. Thankfully, some of the changes that we're seeing are the beginnings of an enhanced and new respect for law enforcement across our country. And while issues can always occur, it does not change the fact that your, do your job is dangerous and that all people are morally obligated to respect the job that you do and the danger that you face. Locally here in our own department, we have fewer officers, and we recognize that. And I'm personally grateful to you and to the members of the PBA for working with the town board and I as we found savings through attrition. In the coming weeks, we will begin the process of replenishing the ranks of the police department with the hiring of new officers off of the new list. And these new officers will become a part of the history and the tradition of the Clarkstown Police Department. Allow me on, the behalf, on behalf of the entire town board to thank each and every member of the Clarkstown Police Department for your dedicated and gallant service. I'm personally grateful for the job that you all do. Time and again, I have the opportunity to meet residents within our community who speak about the great job that our officers have performed. Whether it be the, uh, the gentleman at Rockland Bakery 
uh, during a recent snowstorm this past winter who spoke about two officers pushing his vehicle to safety. Or the young woman who spoke about an officer helping her retrieve the lost dog. Or the senior citizen who spoke about the kindness that she experienced when her husband had passed away and the officers had lent a shoulder for her to cry upon. You do far more than folks realize and we are very grateful for your service. I'm also grateful to the Clarkstown PBA for partnering with us in working to, to help uh, with the reduction in staff without jeopardizing services. I want to thank our police administration and the PBA for continuing to seek to lead and advocate for the rank and file so effectively. Also to the young men and women here today who are receiving awards and scholarships who may be contemplating a law enforcement career. I congratulate you and I wish you well on your endeavor as you pursue this worthy vocation. Finally, to the families of our officers, thank you for sharing your loved ones with us. Your sacrifice also does not go unnoticed. May God bless each and every one of us. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, there's one other uh, distinguished guest I neglected to mention, and since I want my leaves picked up this year, I'd like to apologize to Superintendent of Highways, Frank Desenzo. Thanks, Frank. Okay, our first award today is a uh, civilian award. And one of the things that makes Clarkstown such a great place to live is the willingness of our residents to get involved and help their neighbors. And in keeping with that same spirit of cooperation, it's my honor to present uh, the Civilian Award to Mr. Jonathan Santiago and the Meritorious Police Service Award to Police Officer Kyle McKiernan. Please step forward, gentlemen. On December 10th of 2016, a 911 call was received at Clarkstown Police Headquarters reporting smoke in one, of, in one of the buildings of the Mountain View condominiums in Valley Cottage. Officer McKiernan entered the smoke-filled building and was advised by off-duty FDNY firefighter Jonathan Santiago that there was a working fire in one of the buildings. Mr. F Mr. Santiago found the source of the fire and fought it with a dry chemical extinguisher while Officer Kyle McKiernan worked quickly to find and remove all the occupants of the building. <coughs> About 20 occupants were evacuated from the eight units in that building. And thanks to the effort of these two men, the fire was contained and all the residents were evacuated without injury. Our next civilian award goes to Mr. James Schnauzer. Please step forward, sir. Last July, at approximately 1.40 in the afternoon, Clarkstown police officers responded to a grand larceny in progress at the Victoria's Secret store in the Palisades Mall. One of the suspects fled the scene upon the officer's arrival and a foot pursuit ensued with the officer eventually catching the suspect. The suspect then began to uh, resist arrest. Mr. Schnauzer observed the violent altercation between the officer and the suspect. He immediately offered his assistance and then physically engaged the suspect resulting in his arrest. James Schnauzer put his own personal safety aside and his actions led to the apprehension of a violent felon, 
and the safety of Police Officer Joseph Canaric. Congratulations. Our next award is a Meritorious Police Service Award to Detective Charles Owens and an Excellent Police Service Award to Detectives Dawn Fantini, Robert McDonald, and Christopher L. Maloney. Please step forward. In February of 2016, the Clarkstown Police Juvenile Aid Bureau received information that an 18-year-old male had sexually abused a town resident. With Detective Owens acting as the lead detective, the Juvenile Aid Bureau conducted numerous interviews, obtained search warrants, and did extensive forensic examinations of the suspect's computer and other electronic media. In the course of the investigation, it was discovered as well uh, an extensive amount of child pornography. The detective's actions resulted in the suspect facing numerous felony charges and in July of 2016 the United States Attorney's Office charged the suspect federally with sexual exploitation of a child. Congratulations. Police officers Victor Caraballo and Eric Levy, please step forward. On January 21st of 2016, patrol units responded to a location in Nanuet after receiving a report of a man with a gun who was threatening other residents at the location. Responding officers Levy and Caraballo observed the party exit his room and he approached the officers armed with what appeared to be a firearm. Officer Leave Levy deployed his taser while Officer Caraballo acted as his backup. The taser deployment was successful and the suspect was disarmed and placed into custody. Later on the firearm was found to be a replica handgun. The actions of these two officers resulted in an arrest and peaceful resolution to a high stress encounter which could have been a potentially fatal encounter. An excellent police service award will now be issued to off police officer John Hanchar. Last December at approximately 9 p.m., Officer Hanchar was off duty and assisting a family friend with a disabled vehicle when he observed a suspicious male that was possibly wanted for a robbery that had occurred a few days earlier in Congress. Officer Hanshaw observed that the male was wearing a coat similar to one that was in a flyer sent out by the detectives regarding this robbery. Officer Hanshaw engaged the suspicious male in conversation during the course of which 
he found out where this person lived. Officer Hanshaw then contacted detectives and advised of the information he had obtained. Further investigation by our detective bureau revealed that the male that Officer Hanshaw had identified as a possible suspect was the actual suspect and he gave a full confession to the detectives for the robbery. Officer Hanshaw's observations while off duty resulted in the apprehension of a felon and helped to solve an open robbery investigation. I would ask that Officer Thomas Flanagan and Officer Robert Fortune please step forward. They will be receiving an excellent police service award today. On November 30th of 2016, the department received a 911 call reporting an armed home invasion in progress at a, at a residence in Nanuet. The two suspects had entered the home armed with guns and had stolen money, jewelry, and other valuables. Officers Flanagan and Fortune spotted the wanted vehicle and pursued it onto the New York State Thruway where they initiated a high-risk traffic stop in West Nyack. Three suspects were arrested at the scene. Also two handguns were recovered and a large amount of cash and jewelry. The suspects were later charged with robbery first degree, burglary first degree, and uh, several other criminal charges. Our next excellent police service award is being issued to Sergeant William Robinson and Police Officer Thomas Ralston. In February of 2016, Sergeant Robinson and Officer Ralston were on routine patrol in Nanuet when they observed a pickup truck that was pulling a trailer make an unsafe turn. The trailer was carrying a Caterpillar excavator and the officers stopped this vehicle and determined that the pickup had switched license plates. The officers' suspicions were confirmed as it was determined that both the trailer and the excavator had been reported stolen. The suspect was eventually charged with criminal possession of stolen property third degree, a felony, and the stolen items were valued at over $50,000. They were then returned to the rightful owners. Police Officer Rory Healy and Police Officer Matthew Dowen, please step forward. They'll be receiving an excellent police service award. Last September, Clarkstown Police received a report from a Nanuet resident that a man had just climbed through her window armed with a knife. The caller reported that the suspect threatened to kill himself if police responded. Upon arrival, Officers Healy and Dowen observed a female run out of the residence holding a young child. The officers entered the building and found the suspect holding a large knife to his own throat, threatening to kill himself. Officers Healy and Dowen 
After a while, we're able to convince the man to drop his knife and he was then taken into custody without any harm to himself, the officer, or others. Congratulations. Our next award is an excellent police service being uh, issued again to Officer John Anchor. In the early morning hours of October 5th of 2016, Officer Hanchar was dispatched to the BP Martin Congress for a report of a male who was acting suspiciously. This male was dressed in a hooded sweatshirt and hiding behind the store. Officer Hanshaw responded to the scene, spotted the male behind a tree, and then he watched the suspect before approaching him as he sensed that the man was involved in some sort of criminal activity. Officer Hanshaw then tactically approached the male, confronted him, and the male placed his hands inside of his sweatshirt pockets and appeared to be reaching for a weapon. Uh, Officer Hanshaw grabbed the suspect's wrist and a brief struggle ensued. And Officer Hanshaw then felt the outline of a handgun. Uh, Officer Hanshaw was then able to place the male under arrest. The, the weapon was later found to be an imitation gun and the male was also in possession of a ski mask. Uh, further investigation led Officer Hanshaw to believe that the man was planning to commit a robbery. His suspicions were later confirmed after the arrest as the male made a full confession to his intentions of robbing, doing an armed robbery of the BP Mart. Our next medal being issued is a life-saving medal. This is being issued to police officers Timothy Woolley, Victor Caraballo, and Officer Robert Riley. On July 26th of last year at approximately 9 a.m., the officers responded to King Arthur Court in New City for the report of a medical emergency. Once at the scene, the officers observed a Clarkstown Highway Department employee unresponsive and aspirating. The male party then stopped breathing and also had no pulse. Officers Caraballo, Woolley, and Riley commenced CPR on the party and also uh, utilized a defibrillator. They delivered one shock to the patient and the patient once again began breathing. New City Ambulance and the Rockland paramedics arrived on the scene and continued medical treatment where the uh, uh, highway department employee was then transported to Nyack Hospital where he continued his recovery. The Chief of Operations for the Rockland Paramedic Services advised that these officers were directly responsible for saving this person from an almost certain death. Our next life-saving medal will be issued to Police Officer Daniel Martin, Police Officer Thomas Rolston, and Police Officer Daniel Maloney.
On February 12th of 2016, at 2.50 in the afternoon, we received a dispatch for uh, a person in a vehicle possibly in need of assistance at the Lake Ridge Plaza in Valley Cottage. <laughs> Officer Daniel Martin arrived at the scene and located that vehicle in the parking lot. As Officer Martin approached the vehicle, he observed a man sitting inside the vehicle with a zip tie around his neck in an apparent suicide attempt. The male was unresponsive and the vehicle doors were locked. Officer Martin retrieved a Halligan tool from his patrol vehicle and broke out the passenger side window to gain entry. Officers Rolston and Maloney then arrived on scene. Officer Martin used a knife to uh, cut the zip tie off of the man's neck. And then they, they, they uh, removed the man from the vehicle and commenced rescue breathing. The man then began to breathe without assistance and did regain consciousness. He was transported to Nyack Hospital by ambulance for medical treatment. We will now issue the unit citation to the Clarkstown Police Detective Bureau. Accepting on behalf of the Detective Bureau will be Detective Christopher Kiernan, Detective Christopher G. Maloney, Detective Brian Michelle, and Detective Philip Galligan. On November 18th of 2016, Clarkstown Police received a 911 call from the Key Bank located in Central Nyack. The caller reported that an armed gunman had just robbed the bank and fired a shot at one of the bank employees before he fled the area. CPD detectives immediately began interviewing witnesses and gathering evidence at the scene, including numerous pieces of video evidence. After an exhaustive search, of the recovered video, a suspect vehicle was developed. Additionally, the Bureau sketch artist, Detective Brian Michelle, was able to complete a detailed sketch of the suspect. Using all the detective tools available, CPD detectives were able to identify the suspect. Our Detective Bureau then coordinated with the FBI Violent Crimes Task Force, and just two days after the bank robbery, the gunman was captured in Elmsford, New York. That suspect is now facing 25 years in federal prison, prison after being charged with bank robbery and other crimes. You'll notice on the back of your programs that we have listed uh, the life-saving Narcan, which was administered. In April of 2014, the Clarkstown Police Department was the first department in the Hudson Valley region to train officers in, in providing life-saving naloxone during medical emergencies. The use of this drug, which is commonly known by its brand name Narcan, has proven to be extremely effective in reversing the effects of opioid drug overdoses. During the past years, officers have used their training and the department issued Narcan to successfully revive and save the lives of 26 overdose victims. You can find all those officers' names. Now I'd like to introduce Clarkstown PBA President Raymond Lachette 
as he will present some PBA scholarships to some outstanding young women and men. Right? Thank you, Lieutenant McCullough. Each year, the Clarkstown Policemen Benevolent Association is proud to honor the memory of past Chief, Chief of Police G. Robert Schneckenberg by awarding a scholarship in his name to a graduating high school senior from our community. Chief Schneckenberg was a man of great character, dedicated to family, community, and country. His service and dedication to the people of Clarkstown set a high standard. Today's PBA members are committed to continuing that high standard of service and dedication to the people of this town. This year's scholarship recipient embodies Chief Schnackenberg's commitment to improving our community through service to others. He was dealt with some what, what some may see as a crippling blow as a young child. He did not let this medical setback define him, but rather used it as a platform to raise awareness about him. At the age of 13, he became an active recruiter of organ donation events in the New York metropolitan area. He didn't just survive his childhood ailment, he thrived. He also assisted at events as a member of Daniel High School's Youth Against the Cancer Group, participated in varsity soccer and basketball, and even graduate, graduated from Clarkstown Police Youth, Youth Academy. He did this all while, while maintaining his studies, which is reflected in his 90.28 GPA. On behalf of the Clarkstown PBA, I am proud to present this year's Nackenberg Scholarship to John Gilroy. Again this year, the PBA, in recognition of our strong partnership with the community, is able to present scholarship awards to graduating high school seniors from our town. These students have demonstrated both academic achievement and a strong record of community service. The PBA recognizes the dedication of these young adults as displayed by their volunteer work in charitable and community service organizations. This year's Clarkstown PBA scholarship awards are Rose Owens. Rose could not be with us today because she's celebrating her brother's graduation from SUNY Buffalo and Kaylee Travers. In September 1973, James Day Doyle was sworn in as a Clarkstown police, of, police officer and began a long and distinguished career. Jim recognized the most importance of protecting children and championing their causes and most support the youth of our community. He was dedicated to protecting and serving children through our department's Juvenile Aid Bureau. Even after moving on to other assignments, Jim looked back at his time in Juvenile Aid as his most significant long-term contribution to this department. After Jim's passing in 2005, his wife Rosemary and his son Michael organized and established the J.J. Doyle Memorial Golf Outing. Proceeds from this outing are used exclusively to fund scholarships for local students. Jimmy loved the Clarkstown Police Department and is considered his second family. He surely would have been proud of the young adults being recognized here today. This year's recipients of the Detective Sergeant James J. Doyle Memorial Scholarship Award are Megan Burke, Niles Davies, Kyle Hanchar, Jacqueline Killian, James Parent, Peter Walker, and Allison Wanamaker. Thank you.
recipients. There's one more family we would like to mention today, that, and they are the McCruns. Terry and Chris McCrun were both veteran Clarkstown police officers and brothers who passed away at young age. The Clarkstown Police Department suffered along with the McCrun family during this tragic time. The McCruns, however, did not wallow in their sorrow, instead dedicated to celebrate the lives of Terry and Chris by holding a golf outing with proceeds being donated to the Clarkstown PBA Scholarship Fund. We would like to, to thank the McCruns for the generosity to the youth of the town of Clarkstown. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for attending this morning's recognition ceremony, especially the Clarkstown Police Explorers who have helped out today. As a reminder, at 11 a.m., the annual Rockland County Police Memorial will take place on the county courthouse lawn. Also, please join us now for a reception for all guests, which will be held in the back parking lot of the police station. Again, congratulations to all, and this concludes the 2017 recognition ceremony. Thank you.